Hey everyone, this is Andy with the Coffee with the Geek program. I have a special coffee mug today. It is Coffee with the Geek. Uh, and it is from the NiceGate conference. And uh, this is one of the mugs they were giving out at the conference. And uh, this guy here is, uh, everyone said he looked like me. So I, I brought this coffee mug. <laughs> um, so uh, with me today is Fanny Passaport. Did I pronounce your last name right? Passaport. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I'm going to bring up your website because it's really an awesome site. But let me just give you the briefest introduction. So, Fanny, um, you are a, a ed tech coach at Mercedes Benz International School in India. Yes. And um, Fanny, let me just start off by asking you about your educational journey. And while you talk about your journey, I'll bring up your website and you can. Um, Maybe talk about how we got there because I've been following your work through Twitter and then I looked at your website and I'm really amazed with that. So let's just start with your educational journey. How's that? Yes, thank you. Um, indeed, I love to talk about my educational journey because as a student, I've done a lot of different things. And I think that shaped the way I'm thinking as an ed tech coach as well. So uh, I want to tell you that actually I, I have done um, a technical and agricultural uh, baccalaureate. So not at all in the educational field in the beginning. Um, that was about protecting the environment, so working in national parks. Uh, so I was looking into uh, this kind of career. And then I did a technical degree in uh, protecting nature. So again, thinking about conservation and preservation of the environment. Then I was like, I kind of miss something about the human side. I don't just want to protect nature. I want people to be involved in that. So I started to do a one year course in uh, social development, like, you know, humanitarian. And I looked at that side, but then it was too much about the humans and not enough about nature. So I finally found a really amazing course for my master degree, which was ethnoecology. So it's a mix of anthropology and conservation. And it's how, for example, indigenous people uh, look at um, the protection of nature and how do they live and breathe uh, with the environment around them. And in between this, I was um, traveling to India for all my internships. Wherever I had a chance, I would go to India. And I really wanted to, to stay there and live there. So I was also interested in teaching. And I did an online course in teaching French as a, as a foreign language. So I kind of did this in parallel to my studies. And then I completely moved to uh, teaching. And I still love uh, my previous studies still kind of embedded in my work because I teach theory of knowledge, indigenous knowledge system. So I get a chance to also uh, share my fieldwork experience in India with uh, indigenous people and share it with my students. For example, next week we are going to have a, a phone interview with uh, members of Indian tribes. So that's my educational background. Wow, that sounds like you've got a lot going and it's an interesting journey because it sounds like you really started not really so much with technology, but maybe just as uh, an explorer of nature and of the natural world. Does that sound about right? Yes. <laughs> so one of the things that I had come across and really one of the big things that I came across when I was, uh, I guess, meeting you through Twitter, and that is a thing link that you created that highlighted the ISTE standards for students. And this really blew me away. I loved it because you used thing link and that was, so that made it interactive. And while you're talking about it, I'll try and bring it up so people can see what it is, but it's really great for educators because you provided an example there. So can you talk about um, that experience, like putting that together, why you put it together and, and just maybe the, the genesis of that endeavor? Yeah. So thank you first for the feedback, because whenever you create something, you always doubt whether it's going to be good enough. And that's my first message, actually, to whoever is watching. It's that you don't need to be a genius or you don't need to be perfect. You just got to share what you have. And this is the true innovation. It's to create something with what you know and share it with the world. So um, I'm really inspired by the ISTE um, professional learning uh, network. It's one of my favorite 
PLN. And I do love their new ISTE standards for students. They are from 2016 and they are current and so inspiring. So I wanted to share it in a way that it's visual and it can help people also um, understand how to put them into practice. And I thought to myself, well, I have ideas, so why not uh, making, uh, making this interactive? So I recently started sketchnoting. So I'm a big follower of Sylvia, Sylvia Duckworth's sketch notes and um, had the chance to meet her and have a hangout with her recently about French teaching. So she inspired me a lot to start sketching. This is one of my first sketches. And then I thought, well, this needs interactivity. So what about putting it in ThingLink? And then uh, I thought I could write a text for each of the points, but it would be even more exciting, I feel, if it is a video because I'm thinking of myself when I'm looking for resources and I want something authentic and real. So when I hear people talking about what they're doing, it's, it feels mm, possible to do it in the field. So I like the fact that with a sketch note, you know, you see this exhaustive view and then with the thing link, you see more details. Um, I selected a tree for this because I, I think it's, it is my vision of how to put those standards into practice. You have, you have to have a vision of a tech before you can do anything. So your vision is your root. And then digital citizenship is your trunk. It's the foundation of everything. If you don't care about digital citizenship, you cannot have empowered learners. And empowered learners is the heart of your mission, I feel, as an educator. Are they able to be self-directed learners? And then can they grow all these other standards, all these other um, like attributes? So that's what inspired me. So I want to mention Austin Kleon, this his book called Show Your Work, because this is why I'm sharing my work. I'm never happy with it. I tweet it anyway. I do it anyway. And I always get some people to like it. Some people, <laughs> so I'm. It's not about it's not about uh, popularity, but it's about okay. Some people like it, so I guess it's not that bad. Well, I've got to tell you a, a little secret: is that I was on the committee that developed the standards, and it was so okay. rewarding to see what you created because we had so many conversations about the standards, how they should look, how they should feel, how they should interact. And the fact that you kind of connected ex pretty much exactly with what we were thinking that and pulled it away with something that was um, really functional guide for teachers and in an interactive guide. So I just have to say, like, it just made my heart swell with, with pride, actually, because of, of, of all the work we put into those standards. And then to see you pull those um, out and do something with it was really, really just um, exactly what we wanted, I guess, is, is to make them a living, breathing document that people would, would take out. So just great yeah, work thank on you. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you are are you from France originally, and you're now in India? Uh, I think you mentioned a little bit of that with your journey. And can you tell me about what teaching is like in India, and and maybe how that interacts with with the culture and, and the country itself? Oh, great question. Um, so I've been teaching. I've been in India for living in India for seven years, but I've been traveling to India for over 10 years. So India is my second home and I'm waiting for that day when I've spent as much time in France as in India and can tell that I'm really dual culture. Um, so my experience teaching in India has been in international schools. But before that, when I was doing my internships, I was in touch with like different communities, especially in the Himalayas, in Corbett Tiger Reserve. I worked with NGOs also in the mountains in the Himalayas and looked at the reality of village schools that are completely isolated. So I am, we are very privileged here in Pune, uh, where I'm uh, currently working. And the two schools before also I was in an IB school, International Baccalaureate. So I'm currently in, in a a really good school in India, which is uh, which has the three IB programs. So international-minded people. I'm working with Indians as well as international staff, 
but everyone has international mindedness. And the students, we have a lot of Indians, but we have a lot of different nationalities. I forgot, but I think over 30 different nationalities, and we are a small school, only 350 students. So really a uh, small school and niche school, I feel, uh, in India. Uh, so my experience, actually, right now, I'm, I feel that I'm always getting a better and better experience in my school. I love to, that our school also do a lot of community service and creativity work. So we are connected uh, to the local environment and we try to make an impact through different projects. Uh, and I like to talk about our global projects as well. So I like that we're not just global citizens, we are global citizens. So we do a lot of mystery Skypes, uh, breakout EDU also, and uh, this traveling teddy project where we share a teddy bear and we send it to some other school in the world. So these are the kind of things that we do. So we are connected really to both local and the global environment. Does this answer the question? <laughs> yeah, and it sounds like your school is really open to kind of worldwide collaboration. Would that be a yes. good way to put it? Okay, so tell me, it sounds like you've got a lot going on and it seems like you're really good about reaching out and connecting. So what are some of your kind of future plans in, in educational technology? Yeah, I cannot uh, not mention Richard Anderson. So I don't know if you guys heard about him. He's a Google a certified trainer and he's a great friend of mine. We've met uh, two years ago online because I just asked a question about, so you guys use G I, I, I think I stopped uh, when I was mentioning about Richard Anderson. Yes, let's start there. Yeah, so he's a Google certified trainer and we've been collaborating together and we've met at EST last year for the first time. So this is the, the power of global collaboration with, uh, which we're talking about as well. And so we have a Google Plus community which is close to 1,000 member now and we are developing a solution, free open source on how to create your own curriculum mapping with G Suite. So check it out. Uh, I will probably, I have a link somewhere on my site and I need to add a tab about this. Uh, but you can look for me or for Richard Anderson and you can find out. So this is one of uh, the current and continuous plans with EdTech. Uh, then of course it's going to EST again and we are indeed going to present with Richard about this and I'm going to take another session about how do we put the EST standards for students into practice. Um, I will continue with sketch noting that I just started and I mean I'm getting better, I'm more interested, and uh, I like the combination with ThingLink, so I think I'm going to also do that with the other standards. Uh, I have some old ThingLink and I want to kind of convert, convert them and improve them. Um, working on my blog and my website, <laughs> mm -hmm. and yeah, continuing all the work we're doing here also on the field, it's pretty amazing. So tell me um, quickly, because you've you've mentioned a sketch note, and I haven't really done much with that. Can you talk just a little bit about that and what that's um, maybe done for you? Because I think you've mentioned it a couple times. So can you talk a little bit about sketch note? Yes, sure. So I I did I I was really inspired, like so many of us, I guess, about Sylvia Duckworth sketch notes and uh, had a chance to meet her in Toronto a few months ago for an EdTech team summit. And I stayed one more day to kind of go and ob observe her in her classroom uh, because she's also a French teacher like me. So we kind of collaborated like this. And then uh, she showed me um, some of her uh, video that helped her get people inspired about drawing again. So I thought, yeah, why not? I mean, um, I, I don't think that I draw very well, but I kind of, why not? So I tried that and then I thought, okay, maybe I should try also to do some sketch notes. Uh, and I started to use that app. Uh, what is it called? Uh, hmm. It's one app on uh, Procreate. Procreate okay. app on iPad. So this is a paid app, but it's really worth it, I feel, and there are different layers. So every time I, I would start a new sketch, I would learn something new about how to use that tool and how to 
uh, use the layers and things. So I think everyone can do it. Um, and it's, it's really nice when you see your thinking in a visual way and when you can share it with people. So there are things that inspired me, for example, Michelle Cordy, uh, a keynote at EC was really amazing. And then I, I took two of her ideas and I put them into a sketch note. And then I, I feel like, you know, it's not just in me, it's out there to share with people. So I really encourage people to do that. It's, it's really empowering. It seems like you really have a kind of great, I guess, connection. And, and I think you exemplify the professional learning network is really reaching out to other people. And I think we, we kind of both have been enriched by that experience. So I, I love to hear you kind of, um, you know, connect with different names and really promote their work. And, and you've already given me some ideas. I really want to kind of look back into this uh, sketch notes and, and maybe explore more with that. Um, you, you've mentioned quite a few names, but what, what inspires your work? Maybe it doesn't even have to be a person. I know probably your students inspire your work, but are there other inspirations that you draw from? You've already mentioned kind of nature, but um, maybe talk about your inspirations. Yeah, I want to mention a few names because those people really make me think differently and challenge my thinking. and constantly help me improve so I think yes you mentioned the students of course everyone around your local uh, in your local landscape mathematician Egyptian who um, created uh, visual and tangible learning tools and the silent way approach so there is a, a big part of my website about the silent way approach which is teaching foreign languages without giving a model without listen uh, listen and repeat and with uh, tangible and visual tools. So I love this guy. And there are many teachers who are following his approach. So he is one um, really inspiring person. Uh, but I don't want to keep talking about him because it will take forever. It's really inspiring. <laughs> so check my website for that. Okay. Uh, Daniel Pink, of course, because of mm -hmm. drive and how, uh, how to motivate people. And it's, it's not so un it's just inspiring. It's, it's like, how do you? put this into practice and how do you motivate people without giving them that carrot or without punishing them so without micromanagement or without reward I always hated rewards because it's a way to compete and I hate this atmosphere in the classroom when someone feels he's the best and the other one is the loser so I love the motivation and what you can do in a school at different levels with this uh, sign mindset Sugata Mitra is an Indian person who is so inspiring because he talks about self-learning and he questioned the role of teachers in the 21st century. I think he is an excellent person uh, who has done so many TED Talks and very inspiring in, in the context of India because there's still so much rote learning and disconnected learning. So I think uh, it's more for government school teachers to be inspired uh, from him. Um, Esther Wojcicki, so I never know how to pronounce her name, but Esther Woj, she likes to be called Woj. So she wrote this book called Moonshot in Education. And again, this is like how you're going to do your work, not just 10, ti 10 times better, but 110 times better. So how are you going to try and shoot for the moon? So I really embrace this. I like to ask killer questions and I ask to, um, I like to challenge people thinking, but not as a disruptor anymore, more as a steward. So I like to uh, collaborate and improve things with radical solutions. So I'm not afraid to ask my leadership team, what about doing this crazy thing? And <laughs> even if they, say, if they say no, but they're very open. So I'm lucky to be here. Yeah, it's, it's funny because you put, on your website, uh, you put on your website something about um, point wow, and crazy ideas. And I also have that same yeah. expression on on my website. So I was like, this uh, another reason why I had to talk to you. Um, so tell me about, I guess maybe I'll, I'll combine two, two questions together. What are the trends are, do you see coming down the line? I could, off the top of my head, I'm thinking of virtual reality. And hmm. <clears throat> so what are maybe some trends that you're looking to follow maybe? I know you've already 
kind of mentioned a few, um, but also let's kind of tailor that into the ISTE conference because you went to the ISTE conference last year. Uh, you're planning on going this year. Tell me about ISTE and the experience there. And, and you got some awards at ISTE too. So tell me about the trends and what you're thinking of at ISTE. So um, the first thing would be, what do I see um, coming? Or It's difficult to see what's coming, but at least what's current right now, I think, is makerspace uh, integration and the personalized learning. And I think I understand that the word personalized learning is not there in the EC standard for students, but it really shows that, OK, the students are self-driven, they have goals, and we help them, we facilitate this environment. So I think personalized learning is a big thing, is how do you move from um, a sage on stage to, um, what is it again? A, uh, a sage on stage to a, a guide, on the, guide on the side. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> guide on the side. And I, I, tr I truly believe that this is one thing that is going to be there to stay for some time. So when I mentioned Caleb getting you, I think this would, this is very interesting because in the 50s, he was already talking about this kind of thing, about students' voice and choice in other words. But uh, this is something that all about. Learning is awarenesses, different awarenesses, and then practicing it and mastering it and transferring it. And this works for adults, students, and for any types of learning. So this is something which I think I think is going to be there and stay uh, with different words, perhaps. Maker space, and you mentioned augmented reality and virtual reality. I'm not so um, I'm not a big user yet. I use a little bit of Google Expedition. I use it a little bit, but I have to find my way in to make it relevant and not just that uh, wow factor thingy. Uh, now going to ISTE, uh, yes, I've been to ISTE for the first time last year, and I won uh, the Professional Learning on, uh, Network Award for a community, and one is the Emerging um, Leader Award. So I was aiming at the young, uh, outstanding young educator, and I was one of the top one, but not the first one. So I got the emerging leader, and I was super happy because then it could uh, help me uh, decide to go to EST because it, this gave me uh, some money to travel. So it's because of that I went to EST. Without this, I wouldn't have gone there from, all the way from India. So uh, it was really nice to feel recognized and to meet uh, other emerging leaders uh, and other people and new people and to connect with people and then you're like yay and <laughs> so empowering uh, like uh, Alice Killers uh, Cafe EDU I think we probably have met also uh, in one of those cafe yeah. um, so I, I love that that feeling of togetherness and like-minded people who are gonna change the world so exactly. EST is more about the networking than the sessions. You take what you want, you go wherever you want, but this overwhelming feeling of I'm not alone uh, <laughs> is is great. <laughs> it is nice and it, you feel like you you find your your tribe, they say, you know, yes. at ISTE. Well, I, it is time for the Speed Geek questions. So these are the questions that are just kind of random. Let me bring them up for everyone to see. And they just can be short answer. Or they're just meant to be lively and fun. So um, no worries. <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to present this to everybody. So here we go. You ready for them? Yep. OK, here goes. You'll get three of them. Ooh. <laughs> So what's Yay! your favorite educational blog? <laughs> this is actually a tough one. No, I like it. Uh, I think it's Edutopia. They have oh, a blog, right. and Edutopia is very pedagogically driven. It's not about okay those tools that you can use. It's really about the purpose of what you're going to do with or without technology. What are you going to do to improve learning? So I love this blog. I would agree. Edutopia. That's definitely one of my top, top ones. All right. Here goes. Next one. What's your okay. favorite social network? Twitter. <laughs> Twitter is the best for me uh, to share and to get ideas from one another. I love uh, the slow chat, or also the chat, but the slow chat that I did recently with Isti for the winter uh, book review. 
And indeed, if you are interested in this book, Cognitive Coaching, uh, we are doing a slow chat uh, starting next week, sharing with the world. So Twitter is a great social network for sharing. Yeah, definitely. For professionally, there's just no no better as far as I'm concerned. But all right, last one. Ah, what's your favorite yeah. way to unplug from technology? Oh, I really like the question I got. Yay! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, um, my favorite way is uh, going out with my friends to eat some cool food. <laughs> so um, I have other like I like to read. I like to read and relax and take a bath. <laughs> but <laughs> eating, I think, uh, and people hate me for that because I eat a lot, but I don't get fat. So eating is a <laughs> way for me to stop watching my screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this question from someone who's never been to India but has eaten Indian food and, and like Indian food. Uh, is it uh, as I'm assuming it's so much better in, in India? Well, I guess Indian food outside India is always a bit like uh, uh, changed uh, for the taste of that particular country. So in France, Indian food is in a specific way and then in Great Britain is again different. So I think, yeah, definitely you get authentic food here, uh, but it's really <laughs> super spicy, uh, depending of what cuisine you have from India, because it's also very diverse. But yes, mm -hmm. it's really good. Great. Well, Fanny, this has been a real honor to talk to you. And thank you so much for starting your day off with me. Thank you. And mm -hmm. uh, keep up the great work. I'm going to certainly pass on, I'm going to keep passing on your, your thing link with the ISTE standards and, and passing on your blog. You, you're just doing such great stuff. And I hope I'll see you at ISTE this year. I'm going to be yes, there. Yes, definitely. So. And thank you so much. I really enjoyed. So I would like to know more about you. Maybe I should take your interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But thank you for your time as well. Okay. Have, Have a, a great day. day and we'll talk to you soon. We'll keep in touch. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.